classes. It's Mr. K out in the garage with you once again now. Do you like animals? I mean, like, do you really like those, especially those, like, four-legged furry kind of animals? Well, today you're in luck because we are going to find out how to make your very own four-legged paper animal sculpture. Today's standard is anchor standard number three, refine and complete artistic work. And today's objective is create at least one sculpture of an animal using paper. So what do we mean by the word sculpture? Well, sculptures are what we call three-dimensional art, art that's not flat. You, something you can walk all the way around and see all the different sides. Now, it could be made from all different sorts of stuff. It could be made from stone or marble or something like that. It could be made from wood. It could even be made from recycled materials. It could be made from pretty much anything as long as it's got some form and you can look all the way around it and it's not just flat. All right, so let's talk about what materials we need for this for today. Well, the most obvious one if we're making a paper sculpture is, you guessed it, paper. Now, you could use just some plain old copier paper. That would work just fine, no problem. The thicker the paper, if it's real nice and thick and heavy, the better it's going to work. Now, cardboard is like really thick, might not work so well. But if you have some construction paper in whatever color you want to make your animal, if you're making a, a tiger, you could use some orange and then you could put some stripes on it or something. So that could look really cool. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can still do it. You know what else would work really well? If, you're, if your grown-ups at home are cleaning out a lot of stuff, like we are around here, you might have some of those old folders, you know, those those manila folders. Those work great. You cut like cut them right up the middle, so you just have one piece of paper. They're nice and thick, kind of a yellowy color. Might look like fur already, you know. Works great. Another thing you're gonna need is a nice safe pair of scissors. I have a huge pair of scissors for me because I'm the grown up. I'm the art teacher. You hopefully have some pro appropriate scissors for yourself. You're gonna need to cut something with this you are going to probably need a pencil. If you, you probably have a pencil, but if you don't have, you can still get away with it. You could just do some cutting. You, you, could, you could either draw stuff first and then cut it. So you need a pencil. Optional, you don't have to have it, but maybe something to color in your animal with, some crayons, some colored pencils, maybe some markers, paint even. It's up to you. There's no real set limit on what you need to have to color it. Whatever you have and whatever you feel like using is totally fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. We have all of our materials all set up. I've got my paper, I've got my pencil, I've got some scissors, and we're going to go through each step one at a time. And as always, go ahead, feel free to pause the video while you're working on this so you have time to catch up. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me. So first off, you're gonna take your piece of paper and we're gonna fold it what we call hamburger. Make that fold right across there so it looks like, now if we did it hot dog, hot dog would be the really long way. So if it looks like this, that's called hot dog. We're gonna start with hamburger. There is a way you can do this if you do it hot dog, I'll show you later. But we're gonna do hamburger, try to get those corners matched up. Makes it easy if you just put it right down on the desk, match up the corners. And just press down right in the middle there and bring your finger right across one way, right across the other, and you get a nice crisp fold. All right, so now I have something folded in half hamburger way. Now, that's step number one. Step number two, what we want to do is we want to put that fold, that crease, away from you. So this is this is away from me. I know it's towards you right now, but it's away from me. So this way, it's like the, the opening. If you're looking at it, it's like the opening can talk to you and say, hello, please put me this way. So if you can do that and look at it that direction, you did it the correct way. So have your paper. Notice how wide it is this way. It's not opening like a book. It's not opening sideways like a book. It's opening straight up and down towards me. All right, that's step number two. Step number three, take your pencil. And notice 
what my cir half circle looks like. I'm gonna start near the bottom. I don't wanna get really close to the corner because we, we need to have an, it needs to be thick enough to make a leg for our animal. So we're gonna start right around here. Maybe like two or three fingers. For me, two. For you, probably three. So I'm gonna start there. And I'm gonna go kind of close to the top, not too close. And I'm gonna go right down here about the same distance, two or three fingers from that side. So I've got kind of, kind of making a rain, just a single line rainbow. I'm doing it twice to make it a little darker for you. You only have to do it once though. So we've made just like a one line rainbow right across the top here. That's step number three. Step number four is you're gonna pick that up. Now notice, I've got it together, holding it together with, with my fingers. I'm not gonna cut one little piece at a time. I'm gonna cut both pieces of paper with my, pen, with my pencil, with my scissors. I do know the difference, trust me. So I'm cutting both pieces of paper right along that line at the same time. And I'm gonna save these scraps. I don't want to throw them out, and you'll see why in a moment. Notice I can just turn, I don't have to really move my hand, my scissor hand. I can just close it like this. I'm going to have to move it just a little bit, but really I'm moving the paper when I cut it. So I just kind of right along those lines, and you're going to hang on to these pieces of paper because they're going to be important for you. All right, now this is going to be your animal. This is your four-legged animal. They're gonna stand up just like this. Now you probably see why that nice thick paper would work better, but it still works this way. One thing you can do if it's a little thin or maybe you got a little too close to the edge here, if you just give it a little bit of a pinch at the bottom, just a little, just a little at the bottom like that, that'll kind of make it a little sturdier. Just that little tiny bit right there. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. Oops. There you go, you gotta get your legs down first. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. We'll come back to the, the body of that later. Right now, we're gonna use these for our head and for our tail. Okay, so for drawing our head on here, this part, we're gonna use this whole thing, but we're gonna cut it out a little bit. Now, we don't wanna make it super big, because then we won't have a little bit of a neck. We can make it pretty big. If we make it super tiny like this, if we make it this big, it's gonna look really funny on our animal. It's not gonna be the right size. So, let me use the other side here. What we wanna do is first, I, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make a cat. Now you could make a different animal if you want to, and you can draw the head in a different way if you'd like, but I'm gonna show you one way to get you started. And you know, the nice part about being at home is you can do this more than once. So. I'm going to make a couple of pointy ears for my cat. One ear over here, like an upside, like you're making an A that you just don't put a line across, right? Uppercase A. And they're kind of angled out like that, kind of pointing to the outside, just, just a tiny little bit. And now I'm going to draw a nice big circle. And I'm going to go behind those ears. And make a nice big circle like that. And then down here at the bottom of this circle, and this is why I want to use pencil in this part. Down here at the bottom of this circle, I'm going to make a big wide U that's going to go a little bit below this line here. Just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to erase part of that. So if you draw kind of lightly with your pencil, it's going to work a lot better. And you can fill these lines in with crayon if you want to. You can color in this. Now, if you're gonna color it in, well, let, let's, draw our, let's draw our mouth and our eyes and our whiskers first, and our neck. We're gonna need a neck to attach it with. So let's see here, I'm gonna draw, I'm just gonna draw some nice big tall ovals for eyes. You can do your eyes a different way if you'd like to. I just think this is a nice, clean, easy way to do it. I'm gonna make sort of a triangle that's sort of rounded. I can color that in with my pencil. I could color it in with a pen or, or crayons. And I'm gonna make like, like a J. And another kind of 
backwards J. Now I have a mouth in eyes in nose for my cat and I can give it just three lines. Boom, boom, boom. There's some whiskers. Do the same thing over here. Boom, boom, boom. There, we have cat. I'll give it a few hairs here. You can color this in. Now it's gonna work a whole lot better if you color it in. Oh, you know what looks cool? Give it just one little line here. There we go. It's gonna work a whole lot better if you color in your cat before you cut it out. It'll make it a lot easier. I can go ahead and get some, some I'm gonna use colored pencils. You can use crayons if you like. I think colored pencils will work pretty well here. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna make kind of a, a brown cat. So I can color this part in. Oops, I went outside that line. Guess what? I can cut that off later. It's okay. I'm just gonna color outside of here. And maybe part of the cat is white and part of the cat is black. So I'll give it this kind of calico look here. There it goes. And we're gonna need a neck. I'll just use my brown since I've already got it out. Make a couple little lines down. Now we can make the neck too long to start with and that's totally okay. I'm gonna color brown underneath of this. I think that'll be interesting. I'll make my mouth stick out. Well, my cat's mouth. I don't want my mouth to stick out. That'd be weird. Now, that's probably going to be too long, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken this in with a nice black colored pencil. Go right over the top of those pencil lines. Bring it around here. Colored pencil's hard to erase. Pencil is easy to erase. So I wanna do it with my pencil first. And this line going in front here makes it look like my cat's ears are coming out on this part of their head. They're not just sticking up off the top. There we go. I'll darken that in too. So now, now that I'm all colored in, oops, I forgot this line right here. There we go. Now that I'm all colored in, oh, I keep forgetting things. How about some little eyebrows for my cat here? Makes them look happy if I make them tilt it up like that. All right, now I can go ahead and cut this out. Just give it a little cut there. And again, like I was saying before, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna close my scissors like this and I'm gonna twist my cat. I'm just gonna turn my cat all the way around nicely. If I get inside that line a little bit, that's okay. I'll just cut right to there, go up. You could also just make some cuts here, here. Here. That way it's easy. Don't have to worry about cutting too far, cutting your ear off. Just stuck it right there. Go all the way around. Right to there. I'm going to cut right down this neck. Boom. Get rid of this guy. And I have the head for my cat. Now, wait a minute, cats also have a tail. This thing does not have a tail yet. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that other piece of paper and I'm gonna go ahead and make a nice thick tail. It's okay to make it thick. I, don't, I can just draw right off the edge of this. If you make it too big, it might not stay. But don't be afraid to make it kind of thick. There, almost looks like a like a candy cane or something. I'll just give it some. Now, again, I don't have to color inside the lines and be super careful because I'm gonna cut this off. I'll make it so that there's like some brown parts on the tail. There we go. I'll give it a bit more brown down here. Oh, I could have painted like all of this brown and just left a white tip on the tail. That might have been cool, but I like this one. All right. I could do that for my next cat if I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and just cut right along these lines. I didn't do the colored black colored pencil on this one, but you know what? That's okay. 
I might cut it all off anyway. I'm just gonna cut right around. Notice I'm just moving that paper. I don't even need to, except for closing my fingers together. I don't have to worry about it. Hey, I cut some of my, I cut inside that line. I made it too skinny. That's okay. That's just a guideline to help me out. So now I have a tail and I have a head. Okay, so we have our cat's head. We have the tail ready to go. So I'm gonna set those over here for right now. Now we gotta get the body of the cat ready. And like I said, you could just put a little, just the teeniest, tiniest, little tiny fold in the feet. That helps them stand up a little bit. Now, if you want to, you can totally color this in. It might help to just open this up and I'm gonna put like some, some brown spots on the back of the cat here. They don't have to be super precise. I'm gonna put some down on the leg too, make some little circles down here, and then put something up here. Everybody's cat has a little bit of a different pattern to it if you have a cat. I don't have a cat, I have a dog, but I just thought the cat would be easy for us to get a good start. There we go. Oh, that's good. I'll leave it just like that. Oh, you know what? The cat's got a brown neck, so maybe I'll go... The neck is going to go down here. So I'll give it a little bit extra. A little spot over on this side, a little spot over on this side. That'll be kind of fun. All right, so now I've got it all colored in on both sides. Give it that nice crisp fold again. And this is one of the simpler parts of this whole thing. All we need to do is you're gonna take along this, what we call along this fold, it could be the cat's spine, their backbone, right? And we're gonna have a spot up here, whichever side you think is the neck is fine. Doesn't really matter, it's what you say it is. I'm gonna make a cut a little bit in, and not a very deep cut. I don't wanna cut really super far down. I don't wanna cut it like this. I'm gonna use my scissors. I'm gonna go in, uh, not quite an inch, and just the tips of my scissors. And that's it. That's all I had to do. It's cut just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing down here on what I think should be the tail. If I turned it around and I made this the head and this the tail, that's totally okay. I like this one to be the tail though. I don't wanna put it super close. I don't wanna put it all the way like down here at that very, very end because there won't be enough room. We're gonna bring it in right about here. Just give it a little snip. If that wasn't enough, I can make the cut bigger. If I cut too far, it's harder to fix that. So if you're not sure, just cut a tiny, tiny little bit. I can go ahead and stand this up. And then what I'm gonna do, we're gonna put it together now and make our actual animal. You don't even need glue or tape or anything like that. All you need is a cut. So I'm gonna open up this cut a little bit. And I'm gonna stick my cat's head down in there. And this head will help hold that, that fold open a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm having trouble picking it up. Do the same thing down on this end with my tail. I'm gonna stick that up right there. I'm open up the back side. Just kind of organize it better. And now that helps hold it together. Whoops. There we go. Gotta find the right setup for your animal. And now I have a cat that can stand up on its own. It's got its little face. It's got a side. And now you probably see why thicker paper is helpful, huh? Because this paper gets a little wobbly. If, you, if I use tracing paper for this, this thing would fall apart in two seconds. It would never stand up. That's super thin stuff, right? Tissue paper? Forget it. But if you get that really thick construction paper or something, this will be really, really sturdy and it'll stand up really easily. Now, if you made your neck a little too long, I think mine's okay, but I think mine's a little wide. So after you do it, you could make a few adjustments. I'll trim that part down a little bit. 
Maybe I'll trim this side down just a tiny little bit. It's hard to get that. There we go. And I can put it back in. Don't try to trim it with the without taking it out of there. That might be a disaster. And there we go. There we are all set with our cat. All right, so that's all there is to it. There's a few simple steps, and all you have to do is just kind of figure out how you want to go about doing them, experiment with a little bit, change up the face on your animal, change up the tail a little bit, change up the way you color it, and make it yours. You can look at something like this to try and copy it if you want to, but don't feel like it has to look exactly like the one that I'm doing. It's your artwork. Make it look like yours. For instance, remember how I said if you fold a hamburger, you're going to get this, but there's a way you could do it hot dog? Well, if you take, and you can do it with a regular piece of paper too, but you can also make little tiny ones with an index card. And these index cards work great because they're a little thick, a little thicker than, than regular paper. And if you fold this one instead of hamburger way like this, if you fold it hot dog way, what kind of animal do you think looks like a hot dog? A dachshund, a wiener dog, some people call them. So I got this tiny little wiener dog, this real short little guy. So I can have this little tiny guy. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can get some bigger pieces of paper and you can have maybe a, a lion. You got his tail back there, got the big mane on him. And maybe even do a, another type of cat and get a tiger in here. This guy doesn't want to stand up very well. There we go. I need a tiger. I even did a black bear. These were the colors of paper that I had around the house. So whatever you want to do, you can have lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. So uh, the jokes don't get any better the longer you stay at home, right? All right. So go ahead. You can make your own little zoo, color them, get the stripes in there, get the mane on it. it a giraffe would be really cool. I just thought of that. Boy, if you could get another piece of paper, you don't have to use the extra piece of paper from right here. You could get extra paper, you know, get a full piece of paper and make a huge giraffe neck on it. Might be a little tricky to get it to stand up, but that'd be an awful lot of fun. You could have your own zoo and they could kind of hang out and talk to each other and, you know, hey guys, how you doing? Hey, what do you say we, uh, we go hang out by the river? Yeah, all right, cool. Whatever you want to do. Have a good one. Take care. Enjoy. Have fun. And make them yours. Have fun. Hello.